Okay, well, I have no choice. I have to do evening prayer now. I'm laying here in the dark, fighting this migraine, the after effects of it, which are rough in, the, in and of themselves. But I can't, I have no choice. I have to do evening prayer. Um, we're going to do it a little early. Um, where do I start? Let's see. <clears throat> Well, let me start with the migraine. So I, I kicked the migraine this morning, and everything was great. My nephew laid down for a nap. He didn't go to sleep. Um, that was okay. I laid down for a little bit. Migraine came back full force. So I went through the afternoon. Uh, my wife was checking on me, and she didn't know I had one. She wanted me to come over. She finally came over and sent me home. So I've been here hanging out. Well, I'm laying back here, and I go into prayer. Lord. I'm giving you the backstory of what just happened just now. I was like, Lord, I, I want to make sure I'm doing things according to your will. I want to make sure that I'm doing this the way you want me to do this. My desire is to do this your way, to deliver your message to the world. So, Lord, I, I tell me what you want me to share next. And, like... It was like almost like I was tr I was fighting this sudden you know imprint of of an of an image. My eyes were open, an, an image in my head of word. Turn the phone off. I first put the phone down. I said turn the phone off. And it was weird. It's really I can't explain it. You, you have to go through it in order to understand it. But my eyes were open and I'm looking up at the ceiling, and in my mind's eye I'm seeing these words. So I turned my phone off and laid it down and I laid there. And I mean, I could feel a weird, weird feeling. And that went on for probably about 30, 45 minutes. And uh, then all of a sudden, out of the blue, my wife might, might try to text me. I better turn my phone back. I'll turn my phone back on. Not 10 minutes ago, Sissy Briley shoots me a text. She says, hey, I was just prompted to tell you this. Now, I haven't talked to Sissy all day. In fact, I didn't have any, or I think I talked to her yesterday in one text. I haven't talked to her all day. No, it may have been the day before yesterday. Anyway, every now and then she texts me stuff. I haven't talked to her all day. And she says, God speaks through you, not necessarily to you. And then she had a few other things that she added in there. And I'm like, I'm sitting here and I'm reading her text and I'm like, are you serious? So what he did was, while I was sitting there with the phone off and I'm having these weird feelings coming over me, he was linking some, something for some reason to her because she, at that moment, I guess was open to it, gave her this message to, to translate back to me. Because I've always had this weird sense that he doesn't want to talk directly to me for some reason. I don't know why. I haven't been able to figure that out. Anyway, she texts me this, and she's telling me this, and I'm like, are you serious? So I text her back. I was like, I literally just prayed that over the last hour. And here you are texting me out of the blue. Hadn't talked to her. Didn't know anything was going on. And she gives me that. And I was like, Wow. Immediately after that, I'm, I'm still texting back and forth to her. We did went back and forth about three or four times. I'm, I'm, I did a search for walking in newness of life. And the very first verse that popped up on Open Bible was Romans 6. It was Romans 6. Romans 6. 4. Uh, all of Romans 6 applies to this situation. Uh, and again, it's more confirmation of stuff that we've already been talking about. Uh, this newness of life, this walk that we have. So I'm sitting here and I'm blown away. Headache's gone now. Blown away by me praying for that. And then an hour later, somebody texts me out of the blue. I hadn't talked to you all day. Confirming and answering that prayer with the exact, exactly what I was looking for. Lord, what do I do now? And she literally tells me. And it was in all caps that she put it in the text too. She literally tells me, God speaks through you, not necessarily to you. 
and she, she was like, you're willing, hold on, hold on. Okay, here's her text. I feel I was just prompted to say this to you. God speaks through you, not always to you. I could add to this, but it may go flesh. It came out of nowhere, and that is how God does it with me. Like when he wants me to contact somebody that they come to mind for witnessing. So see, Sissy's open to this. She's a conduit for this stuff. A lot of people are. Every now and then I am. And they will continually do that until I do what I feel God wants me to do. That She has the same thing happen to her that I do. When I'm given a message to share, the Holy Spirit won't let me sleep till I deliver the message. You basically are a willing vessel that already has faith in God. No nonsense soldier that doesn't need a bottle or a blankie. Okay, that was my flesh summary right there. And I told her, I was like, I literally, literally was just praying that. So, yeah. To, to coin a phrase, that just happened. Uh, so we're going to do evening prayer a little early. Um, I'm going to lift up Sister Jennifer right now. Um, she is starting to come around and starting to see that she is being used through her health problems. She is being used as a soldier for Christ also. And it, it, it's a perfect example that she's in the, in the shape that she's in. And she's even coming out of things she wants to come out of. She wants to quit smoking. She has a desire. He's bringing her out quick too. Like quicker than most people. I know my wife smokes she's quit several times it takes a while I know this from experience my mom too and several other people in my lives in my life and she's coming out of this way quicker than most people do anyway she's a great example of how he can use literally anybody no matter what your condition is if you are willing just like sissy said if you are your desire your heart's desire is to please him to serve him to do his will he uses you he doesn't need you to be perfect he doesn't need you to be cleansed he doesn't need you to be completely sin free in fact like the video i did months ago about the hewn stone and the rough hewn stone god always chooses the rough hewn stone why because the hewn stone man has carved the way he wants it god takes the rough hewn stone and carves it the way he wants it And if you can scroll back a couple months ago and find that video, um, I think I actually did, uh, did two videos on it. Um, this is all confirmation of what the scriptures are saying. And with the situation that's going on now, and this is another thing I want to add in here too, and I've asked, I've talked to a couple people about this already. More eyes are being opened to what's going on. Uh, more people are becoming aware of what's happening uh, on YouTube. Uh, more people are starting to realize, wow, you know what? This is really becoming a serious issue. Um, guys, let's come together in an agreement to not engage in arguments over little things, over semantics. Help me set the example of how we should present ourselves and present Christ and represent Christ to the world. Not that we become a cult or anything, but that we each individually represent Christ the way he wants us to represent him. We each have our own different way of responding in our own different ministry. Because he's directing me into a different path. He, he's changing how I respond to things. Help me to represent him properly. Because through you guys, I learn more and I learn to, to temper my responses better. Help me to, to set this example, to, to show the world how a real Christian, a true born-again believer, is supposed to stand per Christ's words. Because if we set the example, they have no choice but to respond. It's not like we're giving them something coming from us. It's literally coming from the Word of God. I wanted to throw that in there. So let me read Romans 6 here because this is really good. You guys know, most of you guys know this already, but there's little nuances in here. Again, we're going back to the little nuances. I was just talking to somebody earlier about Revelation 12.5. And they were talking about how the, you know, the, the woman is the church and Jesus is the child. And I was like, you know, did you ever look at the Greek and see that there's two different Greek words used in verse 5 for child? In the first instance, it, it's a different Greek word it, and it means son. 
And in the second instance, it's a different Greek word that means daughters and sons. And I said, you notice that the second child is harpazoed. If you go look at Jesus' ascension, he, did, he wasn't harpazoed. He was received into heaven. And that second child in verse 5 of, tw of chapter 12 is, is harpazoed, caught up straight to the throne room of God. Now go to verse 5 and look at what it says there. That's us standing in the throne room. A lot of people think that's angels. I don't think so. The more I see, the, the more I, I study, the more I realize that's that's not angels. That's not 100,000 or 100 million plus a few million angels. That's us standing in there, surrounded by angels. <laughs> so really interesting stuff. Um, but he's, he's opening this up to us now. So let's go into Romans 6 and let's read this and then let's go into some prayer. Because, again, the simplicity of salvation, our salvation verse, applies again to this, the one I was led to. Guys, I'm not doing this on purpose. It's happening completely by the prompting of the Holy Spirit. Uh, dead to sin, alive to God. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Shall we you make an excuse? Shall we use grace through faith as, uh, faith as an excuse to, to keep sinning? Shall we use once saved, always saved as an excuse to keep sinning? No. Verse 2, certainly not. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in sin? Now, listen, you got to understand what he's talking about when he says these things. He's not talking about being sinless. Like Chad says, he's talking about you will sin less, not be sinless. When you're living in sin, you're living in unbelief. That's what your life is all about. You're satisfying the pleasures and the lusts of the flesh. When you come to Christ and are born again, and we're going to get to that in the following verses. You now no longer live in that life. Your flesh fights you and wants to stay in that, but your spirit, with the help of the Holy Spirit, is pulling you another direction. You're at war with the flesh. You're fighting with it. The Bible tells us that. We war with the flesh daily. So you're going to stumble and fall back into sin. You can't help it. But we no longer live in that. We no longer make that a practice like we did when we were unsaved. So, now with that understanding, let's listen to the rest of the verses. Verse 3, Or do you not know that as many of us, as were baptized into Christ Jesus, were baptized into his death? Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death. That just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. He's not talking about when we get to heaven after we're redeemed, like a lot of people will tell you. He's talking about in this life here right now on the earth. Otherwise, he would have said we would be raised as Christ, as a spiritual representation. But look at what he says, newness of life. That's here while we're still alive on this earth. Verse 5, For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, follow with me here, certainly, we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, the unbelieving, sin-filled flesh man, full of lust and pride and everything, was crucified with Christ. Just like Christ became sin, us being sin, crucified with him. Now, of course, he took our sin, he did that. But listen, he's, he's giving you the representation here, knowing this that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. He's talking about right now in our lives. He's talking about the moment of salvation is when this stuff happens. So the life you live after that, this is confirmation of being called to walk a certain way. This life now starts going through the sanctification process. He starts to cleanse you and change you. Verse 7, For he who has died has been freed from sin. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. Do you hear what he's telling you? Likewise, you also, verse 11, listen, reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin. 
but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Christ set the example for us to mimic. We can't do it perfectly, but we mimic it in this life. Remember, we don't have glorified bodies yet. We can't be sinless. I love how this is coming together because these little nuances completely change the context of what this Romans 6 really means or what people have been telling people that it means. So again, verse 10 and 11. For the death that he died, he died to sin once for all. He paid for our sins. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. Now, in verse 11, he says, here's what we do. Same thing. Likewise, you also reckon yourselves, consider yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Through Christ we live for God. In this life here on this earth. We don't wait till we get to heaven to do it. We do it now. Verse 12. Therefore do not let sin reign in your mortal body. That you should obey it in its lusts. I'm going to read that again. Listen to this. Therefore do not let sin reign in your mortal body. When you were an unbeliever, sin reigned in your body. Now that you're a believer, you're crucifying that flesh daily. Remember the scripture that says that? You're crucifying it daily, so you're putting it back under, under subjection daily. You're being sanctified. Sin no longer reigns. That you should obey it in its lusts. Verse 13, And do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourselves in this life, right here, right now, Present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. He's talking about striving to live a certain way for God in this life here and now. For sin shall not have dominion over you. For you are not under law, but under grace. For sin shall not have dominion over you. For you are not under law, but under grace. The law couldn't take away sin, but Christ did. Now, why do we still have sin? We're not glorified yet like he was. Christ became sin on the cross. He died. He died to sin. When God raised him, he had a new body that cannot sin. We are waiting for that day of redemption when we too are resurrected into the new body, which can no longer sin. But we're still alive on this earth. So our flesh is crucified every day, just like his was. We're still wrestling with that sin until that time that we're taken up and changed. What then? Verse 15. Shall we sin because we are not under law but under grace? Certainly not. He's saying, no, you can't sin purposely. You can't practice sin again. Verse 16, do you not know that to whom you present yourselves slaves to obey, you were that one slave whom you obey, whether of sin leading to death or of obedience leading to righteousness? Leading to, that means it's a process, sanctification. Guys, Romans 6 is confirming everything we've been telling you. Chad, Amanda Christian, uh, uh, me, and Infinite Rapture, and who else? Uh, Diamondification. So many others, uh, God, I can't remember all the names, sorry. All the stuff that we've been saying. Do you not know that to whom you present yourself slaves to obey, you are that one slave whom you obey, whether of sin leading to death or of obedience leading to righteousness? But God be thanked that though you were slaves of sin, yet you obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine to which you were delivered. Notice it's from the heart, it's in the heart again. And having been set free from sin, you became slaves of righteousness. I speak in human terms because of the weakness of your flesh. Are you guys grasping what he's talking about here? He's saying, look, we're still going to sin. Verse 19, for just as you presented your members as slaves of uncleanness and of lawlessness, leading to more lawlessness, so now, change your mind, Present your members as slaves of righteousness for holiness. For when you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. What fruit did you have then in the things of which you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now, having been set free from sin and having become slaves of God, you have your fruit to holiness 
and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Guys, from this way of understanding, realizing what we are still, and that we are being made ready for the day of redemption. Chapter 6 of Romans, the meaning is completely different now. Paul is literally, it is Paul, is it? Yeah. Literally explaining how this process works. Now, if you want to read it in context, uh, you can go to verse, you can go to chapter 7 and chapter 8 and read more in context with that. Um, but I'm not going to keep going from there because we need to pray. So, guys, go and read this again. Think about this. Meditate on this. He's literally telling you in chapter 6, and he expounds on it in 7 and in 8. He's saying, look, you're still in the flesh. That flesh is being crucified constantly. You're still wrestling with that sin. You're still being purged. You're still being sanctified. On the day of redemption, it will be finished. We're not there yet. So what you do in this life now is you find those things that are sin that you used to do before, those things you used to practice, and you fight from them, you turn from them, you turn the other direction and go towards God. The closer you draw to him, the less sin you will have. We can't be sinless. It's impossible. We're still in the flesh. We haven't been re uh, regenerated or, I'm sorry, not regenerated. We haven't been made new in the new bodies. So he says, look at, what, at your situation and turn away from this stuff. Don't keep sinning because you think you're free for that. Make a mistake, get up and try again. Struggle, keep struggling, keep fighting, go into prayer. We're supposed to pull together and help each other conquer these things. That's what he's saying in here. You're still going to have sin, but you don't walk in that sin anymore like you did when you were an unbeliever. Now that you're a believer, you turn away from those things. You change your direction. You change your mind. You change your situation. And by doing so, you are obeying God because in the heart and the spirit, it has already happened, and in the flesh, it is working its way there. On the day of redemption, everything changes. So please take the time to go read this again. Let's go into prayer. Lord, we come before you this evening in your name to give thanks for the amazing revelations you're pouring out in this word. What you did earlier between me and Sissy was incredible. I, I had a prayer because I want to know what your will is and what message you want me to share. And I want to do it the right way. My desire is to serve properly. My desire is to do this the right way. And I was, at that moment, was under a spiritual attack from the headache. And I couldn't, like even when I had my eyes open and I saw you come up to me and kiss me, I, I, it, it was like you were blessing me. And then an hour later, Sissy, Sister Sissy texts me and says, hey, I was just prompted to say this to you. And it was a direct answer to the prayer. I said, Lord, thank you. Because you showed me that I'm on the right track. You showed me I'm going the right direction. She had no clue what was going on. And nobody until just now knew about this prayer. So I know this was you. Lord, thank you for opening the eyes of my brethren that are, have been seeing these things going on, that are now more and more are seeing this going on. They're coming from those other channels. They're coming over here. They're seeing the truth. They're receiving the truth. They're changing. You have put the call out to your bride, to your body, and we're responding. I, I'm, I'm still, you know, a little bent out of shape and upset because of the so many people that are going the wrong way and twisting your word, using grace through faith and using once saved, always saved as an occasion to sin, not giving the full counsel and teaching people that they should be turning away from those things, helping them fight those things, coming together in prayer, just like you said, just like your word says. But whenever we have Romans 6 and you open it up this way and we're able to share it like this, it helps us prove your case. It helps us represent you and your word properly and give the full counsel as it was intended. They're going to rail, they're going to come against us, but Lord, you're shutting them down. You're showing, you're exposing them and exposing their fruit through the videos that we're doing. And they're over there scrambling, trying to do damage control, trying to stop this. The thing is, 
it's not working. You are omniscient and your will is coming out. And they just, they're exposing themselves. The more of this scripture that I read, the more videos I put out, the more they have to do damage control. Lord, you are turning them on their ear. Thank you. I offer this that you show them the truth, that they turn back to you and to the truth and not keep walking in this direction they're walking. So many people are caught up in this deception. So many people are caught up in these misunderstandings. But your word stands and you're opening your word up and you're using vessels like me. You're using vessels like Sister Sissy. You're using vessels like Jennifer Britt. All my brothers and sisters that are, all of a sudden you're lifting all these people up and they're all going out there and they're fighting. This is like the last call, the final sounding of the trumpet. To get everybody to wake up and to be ready. If that's happening right now, if we see this happening, and it's not just here on YouTube, it's worldwide. We know you are almost here. You're that's the midnight cry. Lord, thank you for the confirmations. Thank you for working in our lives, showing us that you're here, showing us who are really yours and who isn't, and helping us to stand strong, helping us to engage appropriately. But there's a certain point when you just put your hand up and stop and walk away because they made their decision. All we can do is present your word and if they accept it, they do. If they don't, they don't. You're going to finish that work and we know that. Lord, we glorify you and we honor you and we thank you. And we praise you for these amazing things that you're doing. My migraine is completely gone now. Thank you for that. I pray in your name blessings upon the brothers and sisters. Blessings of truth. Blessings of peace. Blessings of healings. 1 Corinthians 6, 19-20 says, Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own, for you were bought with a price, so glorify God in your body. These two, ver or, yeah, these two verses go right back to Romans 6. How do we glorify God in our body? Prayer for one, but we turn from the sins that we have. We fight these things. We fight what our body wants to do so we can do the things you want us to do. So that we can fulfill your will in our lives. And in our hearts, we hate the sins that we do perform. The ones we're still wrestling with, the ones we're still fighting with. Lord, your word is becoming clearer every day, and more and more people are seeing it. We're, we're freeing people from the shackles of doubt and fear and, and having troubled hearts and questioning whether they're saved or not or whether they're doing the right thing or not because you're opening up your word, and it's amazing to see. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy and your grace. Thank you for just the incredible changes that have happened. The things just in the last few months that we've seen are just astounding. And thank you, Lord, for strengthening me to put out this evening prayer. These morning and evening prayers are really bringing people together. And they've been a real blessing, not only to the ministry you gave me, but to everybody that hears them and shares them and engages them. Thank you, Lord. Keep doing what you're doing. Do more. Show us more. Strengthen us more. Encourage us more. And uh, if it be your will... Come get us. <laughs> the Spirit and the Bride say, come. We know there's an appointed day for that, Lord, but we still want to pray for it because we want to go. Make us ready, Lord. Prepare us. Make us worthy to be taken from these things so that we won't endure this tribulation. Prepare our hearts. Keep us watching for you and keep us awake. Thank you, Lord. It is in your name that we pray. Amen. Thank you guys for joining me for evening prayer. I have a crowd of people over here. Thank you guys for joining me for evening prayer. Guys, go read Romans 6 and then go to 1 Corinthians 6, 19 through 20. Look at what these things say. Look at how they match. Look at how they go together. Meditate on this. Think about this. And don't use these scriptures to apply to other people. Apply them to yourself in your own life. And see what it speaks and what it says to you. 
I think you just might find just a few small changes can make a big, big difference in drawing you closer to Him. And when that happens, all kinds of amazing changes will happen. The Word will open up for you like you've never seen before. You'll see things you, nobody's seen in the Word. I love you guys very much. I bless you all in Jesus' name. Thank you guys for watching the videos. Thank you. All of you who are standing with me in truth, thank you for standing with me in truth. Help me set the example for everyone else. And it's not our example, it's Christ's example. Standing for truth. Standing firm on the truth. Not wavering. Representing Christ. Preaching the gospel, the true gospel. Ignoring these arguments and these fights. I'm not even addressing what these people are doing. Because that doesn't lead people to salvation. I'm sticking with what the word says. And I'm going to continue to do that. See you guys in the next video.